I have a sincere belief that there are habits that keep people poor and that anybody, regardless of where they're born, what their circumstance is, if they do the right things over a long enough time period, they can get out of it. If you understand the system, you can use it to your advantage. If you don't understand the system, it is going to screw you over many, many, many times. This is where the rich will become richer, the poor will become poorer, and the middle class will get wiped out. If you don't understand this, you are going to get screwed over by the system. Because now, guess what? Your gas is going to be more expensive. Your groceries are going to be more expensive. Your home cost is going to be more expensive. The cost to do anything is going to cost you so much more today, next year, the year after that. When you understand that, it's going to change what you do with the money. The first one really has to do with understanding money because unless you understand what money is none of the other habits really matter because at, at its core what is money and when you ask people that you might say it was a hundred dollar bill a fifty dollar bill that's what money is but what is that money because that money that we have today is different than what money was 60 years ago the money that we call money today is currency it's really just pieces of paper and when you understand that it's going to change what you do with the money and the reason why i'm saying that is because uh, i'm from uh, my family's from India, a uh, state in India called Punjab. And over there, it's a very traditional thing that when you earn this paper dollars, many people will convert this cash into gold because they understand that these paper dollars lose value and it's just paper. So they want to convert it to something real, something tangible, so they will go out and buy gold with it. All right, really fast, explain to people why paper money loses value over time. So our paper dollars can be manipulated and controlled by other entities such as, such as the Federal Reserve Bank yep. and the government. Now, the interesting thing about the Federal Reserve Bank is it's called the Federal Reserve Bank. However, it's not federal. It says so on their website. They're not a reserve. They don't keep cash reserves anywhere. They're not a bank. You and I can't go there to deposit money. So what happens is, should I hear wolves howling in the background? Like, is there something sinister going on? Do you think for real? Or is it just the system and it's just how it works? Well, it depends. If you understand the system, you can use it to your advantage. If you don't understand the system, it is going to screw you over many, many, many times. So you have the government and the Fed. The government spends money. Now, where do they get their money? Well, they get their money from taxpayers, people like you, me, people watching this video through tax dollars. If the government has a million dollars, they can only spend a million dollars, you would think. But that's not how it works. So the government has a million dollars. And what's happening now is they're going to spend significantly more than a million dollars. Now, if you have a certain amount of income and you spend more than that, what do you do? Well, you're going to have to subsidize or find that extra cash somewhere. And in the government's case, what they can do is they can go out and look for a loan. It's called a treasury bond for as long as anyone can remember, have been considered the safest investment anybody can make. Well, what it is, is you're literally loaning money to the government. But what happens now if there's not enough people out there to loan money to the government? If the government wants trillions and trillions of dollars, if there's not enough people out there to loan that money to the government and they keep wanting to spend more money, you still got to make up this cost. So what do they do? They call up their friends at the Federal Reserve Bank and they say, hey, we need a $2 trillion loan. And then the Fed's going to say, OK, we got you. Now, remember what I said, they're not a reserve. They don't have a cash pile anywhere. So what do they do? They go to the money printer, boop, boop, boop. And now they can print out $2 trillion. They loan this cash to the government. And now the government got the $2 trillion. The Federal Reserve printed it out of nothing. The government can now take this $2 trillion and spend it in whatever way that they want. It can be inefficient. They can try to create efficient products, but their goal is to hopefully help people. Now, whether they're inefficient or not is a political debate. However, you know that, that is what they do. Now, really fast before we move on. So this is the part that people need to understand about why the rich get richer. Because yeah. I'm super, as a rich guy, I'm like, oh, I'm going to get richer? Like, what? <laughs> Great. So, so what happens but I then? never understood how. So now what happens? You just printed this money, right? And then- Which you don't actually print, by the way. You just increase the database somewhere. It's a, it's a bunch of digits. Yep. And now this money enters our economic circulation. But what happens now when more dollars enter without actual wealth being created? Because we saw this happen in textbook form in 2020 and 2021, where nothing was being produced except money. Well, when more money gets produced, it effectively reduces the value of each individual dollar. This is what inflation is. The word inflation comes from the word inflate. What are you inflating? 
the monetary supply. So you're increasing the monetary supply, causing the value of each individual dollar to go down, which effectively causes the price of things to go up. And so in 2020, 2021, no one's producing. However, the government is spending money like crazy. Where are they getting this money? The Fed. So the Fed's printing money, giving it to the government, the government's spending it like crazy. Now people are getting money. It's people, it's businesses, it's corporations. Um, and this money is being spent. And now everybody is like, wow, I'm sitting at home and I'm rich. You have some people who are getting big unemployment checks. You have some businesses getting millions of dollars and everything is running smooth. But, and people are spending money like crazy, buying things, but nothing is being produced. So then what happens? Well, now you have a supply chain mess because everyone's buying all the stuff in stores. However, no business is able to produce anything because the economy shut down. So the supply chain issue then you start to see is a byproduct of the inflation because everyone's trying to blame, oh, the inflation is happening because of supply chain issues. But you have to look at what is the real root cause? The inflation is what causes the supply chain issues. And now we're trying to go backwards. But this is where rich get rich and the poor get poor, because as the value of the dollars drop, what happens for regular people, your salary doesn't stretch as far, your savings don't buy you as much. And so you're effectively becoming poorer each and every day because for most of us, we're taught to save our money. That's what I was told to do growing up. Uh, you know, the traditional Indian houses, save, save, save. And so I was told to save my money and your savings are becoming less valuable each and every day. Well, what wealthy people do is they're not storing cash, they're buying assets. And so when, when we have this sort of economic system, can you explain what an asset is? An asset. This, we're now getting to the root of how the rich actually get richer. Right. This was the part it took me a very long time to understand. But now that I get it, one, it doesn't need to be the rich that are getting richer. Anybody can own assets. Yeah. But they have to understand what assets are. It is something that gives you equity. And at, at the broadest form, an asset is something that puts money in your pocket. A liability is something that takes money away from your pocket. What's an example of an asset? This could be owning a business, investing in stocks, investing in real estate, anything that you buy for the purpose of making money, right? And so what's happening now, this money gets printed and it enters our economic circulation and now you can own the, the assets or what happens is let's say you own stocks, you own real estate. Well, the Fed can also manipulate interest rates. So when interest rates go down, it makes borrowing money cheaper. Well, when you make borrowing money cheaper, more people and institutions are going to go out and borrow money. This also creates more inflation because now when you go to the bank and you borrow a million dollars or a hundred thousand dollars, the bank is going to work with the Fed to print this money. And that's how it gets injected into the economy. So lower interest rates create more inflation. And if you are somebody who's financially educated, you own assets and we didn't explicitly answer what is an asset. And so when interest rates go down, because now the Fed, working with the government, want to create more inflation, more dollars are going to enter economic circulation. More people are going to want to buy a home. Well, if you have more demand to buy a home, where do home prices go? Up. Who owns homes? Well, yeah, if you're a homeowner, but if you are a real estate investor, now the value of your assets have just because now you own multiple real estate investments. Your rents have gone up. Your stock investments have gone up because now businesses can borrow money for effectively nothing. You borrow money for three, four, five percent, and now you can borrow hundreds of millions of dollars to grow the company. And if you can grow your company by six percent, well, you just made a profit off of the free debt. And so now corporations become wealthier because of asset prices go up. And what does this do? The reason why it makes rich people richer and poor people poorer is because not only is your cost of living higher, but now if you want to go out and invest your money, well, asset prices are more difficult to attain. It's harder to buy the same level of stocks. It's harder to buy the same level of real estate because now the people who own these have already seen that appreciation. And now if you're wealthy and you understand this and you're buying these assets and you've been buying them, now you're seeing the real gains and you start to see this divide between the rich and the poor. And this is where inflation disproportionately hurts the financially uneducated and the poor and disproportionately benefits the wealthy. And that's why the middle class gets wiped out. Everybody in America should be a business owner. However, not everybody should be in the business of starting a company and not everybody should be in the business of operating a company. So what, what does that mean? Well, you can be a worker and an owner, right? You, this concept of equity, 
you have to understand this because wealthy people are working for equity. They're not just working for a salary. And so what you want to do now is you want to understand, okay, I'm working every day to get paid. Now, what are you doing with the salary? Either you can take the salary and go out and spend all of it, or you can take some of the salary now and work to build equity. Maybe that's in stocks. Maybe that's in real estate. Maybe that's in your own company. So if I buy stocks, I'm buying equity. You're building equity. You're literally buying ownership in companies. If you go out and buy a share of say McDonald's, you become one of the owners of the McDonald's company. And now when the McDonald's valuation goes up, you get to share in that because the price of your stock, the value of your stock goes up where you got to create this margin. I call it like an equation where, you know, your, your wealth is really, you, you take your income minus your expenses and that's equal to your investments plus your savings. So you take your income, whatever money you make, you subtract your expenses, your houses, your, your home, your clothes, your car, whatever your expenses are. And if you have some money left, either this money is going to be saved or it's going to be invested. Well, if you have some money left, you're already, you know, doing something that a lot of people are not doing. Mm. You're more than the majority of people. Right now, I just read a study yesterday. Seven out of 10 Americans across the board are living paycheck to paycheck. 50% of Americans that are making $250,000 a year are living paycheck to paycheck. That's crazy. It's not how much money you make. It's what you do with the money you make that is so important. And so now, if you have a buffer, you're already better than the majority of people. Now, the question is, what do you do with it? Well, we're taught save it, save all of it. So your investments are zero and your savings, you're trying to grow that thinking that you're trying to, you're going to become wealthy, but you're never going to be able to out save inflation. You're going to, your, your savings are literally making you poorer each and every day. However, you don't want to just not save any money. You got to be strategic with it. What I like to say is there are three reasons why you should be saving money. You save money for an emergency, have somewhere between three to 12 months worth of expenses, depending on your risk tolerance. Save money for a big purchase. You want to buy a car, you want to buy a house, you need some cash to do that. Save money for an investment. If you're not saving money for one of these three reasons, you are saving your money the wrong way and it's making you poorer each and every day.